Thanks, Sure. Uh, it's good to be back with you all. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, feels like it's been a minute, so uh, I'm excited to get going with spring ball. Uh, just had a team meeting this morning with our players. They all have done a really good job. I'm proud of them. They've really had a good winter, uh, hit the weight room extremely hard. Uh, our staff does a remarkable job in there in, in developing these players physically uh, and mentally, and, and the guys really look good, and they're excited uh, to get going. So uh, we'll be on the field tomorrow morning and uh, excited about that. Um, the guys, again, have done work in the weight room, but also with some of our uh, individual walkthroughs and work, workouts with our coaches. Uh, they they really look good and excited to get rolling. Um, you probably saw uh, the addition of John Settle as our running back coach. He will be running back coach and co-special teams coordinator. Uh, he'll be code with uh, Coach Frank Bafano. So um, you know we have uh, Louis Matsakis who really coaches our coaches. He's, uh, he's an analyst. He's in an off the field role, but Louis does um, all of our uh, film work and breakdowns and coaches to coaches and puts our guys in position. Uh, so between the three of them and then the, you know, our guys that normally work with them um, will be there and continue in the role that they always have. Uh, Coach Summerall does an active job. Coach Steve Klinkscale, uh, those guys will continue to work with it. Um, uh, a few other updates. Uh, I got an update uh, this morning from Kim. Um, you know, Chris Oates is, you know, continuing to, to get better. She showed me a picture this morning and, and talked with her. He looks stronger. He looks like he's doing well. I continue uh, to ask for your prayers for Chris and, and uh, continue to support them with the GoFundMe in, in all those areas. So uh, we appreciate that. Um, also, I'd like to recognize Coach John Slarman. Uh, and Leanne, you know, uh, accepting that award on John's behalf uh, to win the Broyles, uh, you know, as assistant coach of the year. So, uh, you know, congrats to John um, and Leanne for, for that award. Um, you know, this spring, I'm really excited, as I mentioned to the team, it just feels like we're so much deeper than we've ever been. And I think that has a lot to do with, uh, you know, the six guys get coming back for their sixth year and then um, the addition of 11 newcomers. So it really puts us at a pretty full roster for the spring. So that's the first time we've ever had that many. So uh, we have 17 guys um, you know, that are, that are uh, really would uh, generally not be there. So uh, we feel like we're pretty deep and in, uh, in anxious to get going. So with that, I'll open it up there for questions. OK, questions, raise your hand. John Hale. Mark, just what's the process going to be like for Liam kind of implementing the new offense this spring? And what do you want to see by you know, the end of 15 practices or whatever that side of the ball to get out of this? Well, well there, there's so much, John, to, to, to install, you know, so, um, you know, obviously we've had the opportunity to meet with our players and have walkthroughs. And so we've already implemented some, you know, some things for them. Um, but, you know, there, there's a great deal to go through. Everything is going to be new, obviously, from terminology to formations to the operation, from getting under center, uh, different tempos, different cadences. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to go into it. So we really have to uh, use these practices wisely. In our, and, you know, the nice thing with the, the way our schedule is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's taxing on our players and our coaches but we go for five weeks so we have a long time you know so we spread it out we could take our time have really quality meetings in between our practices and use our time wisely so we have a, we have five weeks to 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 get a lot better and uh, i challenged our team and our players with that this morning that we really have to uh, be dialed in and be more skilled overall i mean it, it you know the 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 scheme is fancy for you know, for media, for our, for our team, for our players and everything, but it's still a fundamental game. And that's what you can't get away from. Um, you know, obviously there's so much big picture things to get in and to get done and to install, uh, but you also fundamentally always got to get better every time you take the field. Uh, so there's a lot to do, but, but it's an exciting time. Josh Moore. Hey, Mark, when you look at the, with the new offense, putting that in, but also for the defense, but as you're looking, you're, you've got a, a bunch of new starters. You're going to have to kind of suss out there. And seeing what they do against that offense, will that 
especially up front, help those guys try to get back to where they were, you know, with the pass rush, you know, a couple of years ago? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, we, we have an opportunity to, um, you know, get better. I mean, we have some experienced guys up there and, and uh, you know, they're, I mean, I, I don't know what the difference would be offensively. Defensively, they have their own, you know, issues and things that we have to work on. And, and that's just normal, every position, you know, each guy that we take our field, take the field here this spring, you know, has to take it upon themselves to get better each and every day. So I don't know, you know, how to, you know, correlate that question to the offensive installment. I mean, defensively, they just got to get better. I mean, pass rush is going to be no different, you know, so to, to directly answer your question, you know, it, that's, you know, fundamentally we have to get better. You know, the scheme's not going to, you know, affect how they pass rush. Dick Gabriel. Dick Gabriel. Sorry. Take your uh, come on, Dick. Take your mute button off. I mean, get with the program. <laughs> I know you wanted to hear from me. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. You guys don't have much downtime after the season, and given everything your kids went through last year, both on and off the field. Could you talk a little bit about how vital it was to get that win in the bowl game as kind of a springboard for this year? I think it was very important. Um, you know, as we talked about leading up to that game and the decision and, you know, the invite and all those things, it was, it was really important. Um, you know, again, I was very proud of our players for the investment that they made to go to the bowl game, to, to practice and to compete in that game to win. Uh, you know, we came away with the victory. It definitely helped us. And, it, and, it, and some time off, as you mentioned, they needed it. After the bowl game, they had an opportunity to get some time off. And then I was really encouraged with the way they came back and their, their attitude, you know, to this point. Um, you know, I felt like we had a really strong spring. I'm sorry, really strong, strong winner. Uh, those guys have hit the weight room. They're, they're bigger, they're stronger. And mentally, I think we're in a really good place. So I think we're all excited to get going here for spring. Lonnie Dimery. Uh, Mark, you previously alluded to it in your uh, uh, opening, but uh, about the uh, conditioning, I mean, the development of your players. Uh, you've built up quite a reputation uh, as of being able to develop players, be it two, three, four, five, or whatever. And, uh, and I know a lot of hands go into that uh, from Monica Fowler all the way up to you all as coaches on the field. But I, uh, talk about Coach Ed, Coach Edmund, or Coach Ed is officially known, uh, and said, what sets him apart from, from uh, some of the other people you work with? Yeah, I think that's – that's a great question, Lonnie. What what do we have, Susan, in the in the invite to the combine? Nine, uh, seven. seven. We had seven, which is top ten, right? You know, and yeah. and uh, so, it, you know, I appreciate that question. It's true. I mean, you know, again, this year we have seven guys invited, which is in the top ten in the country, uh, getting the official invite to uh, the combine, and it says a lot about Coach Edmund. Uh, it says a lot about our, our whole staff, but Coach uh, Coach Edmund and Coach Mark Hill, uh, the two lead guys in the in the weight room. I think what separates them is, is um, you know, really their their personality, uh, and they're you know they're obviously very knowledgeable, um, but they you know it's just like my philosophy, you know, and, and Coach Ed is, is, is you know very disciplined and very you know tough, but uh, he also has a great relationship with the players, and I think that's super important, especially in that room, uh, because really Coach Ed and Coach Mark Hill and that group they see the players really more than we do. You know, normal normal years when you hit the road recruiting, you're gone for a month. You know, at a time, you know, sometimes, and and they're the ones that are constantly with them all year round. Uh, so they have to have a good pulse of the team. They have to have the respect of the team, and uh, they also have to, uh, you know, have the discipline when necessary. So it takes some talented uh, people uh, to run that room, and uh, you know, so I'm, I'm very grateful for those two and, and all the guys in our weight room. Kent Spencer. Up, you know, oh, during the summer and, and during the season, and maybe you loosen things up a little bit with your players after the season, so they can kind of have some time to breathe. How much do you kind of have to tighten things back up going into spring ball, making sure that that you guys can get through? Well, I think you know I've, I've 
we've been working on that with our players. Um, you are correct, and we've talked about it the past two or three weeks about uh, continuing to, to stay disciplined and make sacrifices. So I feel like the guys have. Yes, I think um, you know there's a, there's a tendency when they have a little more free time uh, to get a little looser and you know socially start to do some things so uh, we've talked about it we've addressed it and uh, I you know overall we still have uh, very good control of this situation here um, you know as I guess as much as you can as far as uh, the COVID related issues and things of that nature so uh, the guys uh, seem like they're doing a very good job. John Clay. Mark, are there any one or two positions that you're going to pay special attention to looking for development this spring? I think, um, you know, it's it's fair to say that the wide receiver position is always a position that uh, we feel like we have to uh, continue to grow. And and obviously the quarterback position is always important. Um, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, we're thin at linebacker, um, but also, you know, I want to see, I feel like we have quite a few bodies, but we need to take a, another step, you know, on the defensive line as well. Yeah, on the defensive line, I was going to ask specifically about about the turnover there with Hoskins and Looney and Mahone and Bohanna gone. You've got some guys returning, but think back to a year ago when you signed that class of Rogers, Hayes, Ribka, you know, Octavius and, and Anale missed spring practice a year ago. They, they were deprived of that. Well, how high should expectations be for that really heralded group from a year ago? Well, uh, I'm really not worried about the expectations. I am worried about, you know, day to day, you know, each of those players, um, you know, challenging themselves to, to get better each and every day. Uh, I think, you know, they all have a very good work ethic. I think, um, you know, they're, they're very talented. Um, you know, talking about the, the defensive line in general, you know, you look at Marquan and uh, to this point, I'm really excited with the way Marquan has come back and just his attitude and what he's done this winter academically, what he's doing um, in the weight room. I really like his mindset right now. And if he continues to grow, he has an op opportunity to be an impact guy and, and uh, just want to encourage him to stay consistent uh, with what he's doing. Uh, because he's off to a really good start. And then, you you know, you got Josh Paschal, who kind of leads the whole team, um, just, the, the you know, with his mindset and his leadership, his dedication to his teammates and, and this program. Uh, Josh is a special player and has an opportunity to be a really uh, impactful, you know, defensive player here this, this year. And then you got Octavius, you got Isaiah Gibson, Justin Rogers, Trayvon Ripka, Sam Anali. All those guys, Josiah Hayes, um, you know, all talented guys that need, you know, you know, individually just need to concentrate on themselves and just get better day by day. You know, there's there's no magic formula. You just got to go out and work every day and get better. It's a fundamental game. Um, you know, the closer you get to the line of scrimmage, the more fundamental it becomes. So offensive line, defensive line, you know, it's really a technique game. Um, so those guys really have to hone in on their craft and what they're doing and, and, you know, pay attention and fundamentally get better each day. Nick Roush? Mark, when we talked to you at the end of the season, there was a lot of talk about moving forward, pushing the program forward. Uh, you made those moves. What is pushing the program forward look like? Uh, over the next 15 spring practices? Just getting better. I mean, again, there, there's no magic formula. There, there's no magic wand. It takes, a, it takes a, 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 you know, a plan, but it also takes, you know, dedication on a lot of people's part, you know, so we all have to do our part and, and just get better day by day. I'm really excited. I, I mentioned that. I've said it before. I think I feel really good about, you know, where we're at, but we have to put in the time. We have to put in the work. And and it's day by day. You can't get out ahead of yourself. I know that's boring to talk about, but it's so true. We're in there right now. We've started the morning, you know, and it's the same way tomorrow. We're, we're up and at it early and really excited about attacking each day and, and getting better. It's, it's, it's a fun time for me personally. It's a fun time for, for, for our program, I think, because uh, I'm excited about, uh, you know, just getting better and, and, you know, putting a good team out there next year. But uh, we have a lot, a lot of work to do today. With all the new changes, is it, is it kind of like a tryout for all, all the guys, guys now that they're getting to play for these coaches for the first time? It, it definitely is. It definitely is. Um, there, there are some things, you know, that are different, you know, philosophy-wise, schematically. And, um, you know, 
know, so it's it's wide open. I mean, you have to go out and prove it every day. I mean, obviously, we have some guys that we feel really good about that have proved themselves uh, for a long time, and um, you know, we expect them to to be a really good player, no matter what system they're in. Um, but there's also a bunch of guys that we're looking at that need to take it to another level. Jeff Drummond. Yeah, Mark, you uh, mentioned the quarterbacks a, a little bit. I'm sure you're going to field quite a few questions on uh, on them these next few yeah. weeks. Um, is there any kind of plan going into this with the, how those reps will be divided and, and what you'll be looking for out of those guys? Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to, to those guys, you know, getting better just, just like all the other guys. So um, I'm not going to get into that and tip my hand and do all those things. I mean, uh, you know that. You know what I'm going to say. It's a competition, uh, just like every other position out there. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it moves forward. Jared Perry. Mark, what were some of the things that stood out to you uh, about John Settle and, and I guess just kind of what made him be the guy for the running back room? Yeah. Uh, Susan, is John going to come on? Here? I think John's going to step on here afterwards um, and talk with you all a little bit. You know, but – John, I mean, just look at his resume, you know, and, and where he's been and the places he's coached and then visiting with him and talking with him. He was kind of a no-brainer for me, to be honest with you. Um, you know, he's a guy that comes from a great program in Wisconsin, two different stays there, has NFL experience. Um, just his, his personality, uh, his, his background, his work ethic, the, you know, the, the knowledge that he has, I think um, – you know what I liked about John was not only is he a, a great running back coach. You could you could look at uh, you know the running backs at Wisconsin and look at the running backs at uh, Kentucky and and feel pretty good about it over the, the last four five six years. So um, you know John's done a remarkable job at, at Wisconsin and other places he's been. But but also big pitcher. You know a guy with quite a bit of experience that can uh, help with big pitcher, help with uh, special teams with the co title. And, um, you know, so he brings a, an awful lot of experience and, and stability to that room. John Long. Hey, Mark. Uh, Coach Cohen has been making the rounds on all the radio shows and media outlets. And to be honest with you, I think he's been wowing everybody with his expertise and knowledge and personality. What advice did you give him or what advice would you like to give him about dealing with the local media? I didn't give him really any advice uh, about that and, um, you know, and really don't feel the need to be, you're the first person that's mentioned it that tells you where my head at is at John. I, I really, no offense to anybody or anything, but I have no clue what goes on, you know, outside of people come to me when I need to know something outside of that. I, I don't know what's going on or don't listen to it. Don't know. So, uh, as long as, um, usually it's no news is good news for me whether it's my players or staff or anything. So you're the first person that's brought to my attention. I have no clue what he's done and not done, but I just know him personally. And I know our staff, you know, personally in the way they handle themselves and who they are. And you don't get to these positions with not being able to handle yourself. That doesn't mean any of us are perfect. We all know we're not, we're gonna make mistakes. Uh, but, you know, I don't worry about that with Liam or, or John, who's gonna come up here next or any of our guys, I really don't. Uh, uh, I think you know I'm not that type of a control freak. Yeah, I'm happy to report that so far so <laughs> yeah. good. But well, thank you. Can change. That's right. Always can. Okay, guys, we've got time for a couple more. So we'll do Josh Moore and then John Hale, and then we'll get Coach Settle up here to answer questions as well. Josh, go ahead. Mark, I know for all the transfers, it, it's something of a second chance. But you know, for Luke in particular, I would think that's something that he's pretty excited about. And and clear, I would think you know, for you to want to bring him in, it, you feel pretty good about where that can go. Just kind of walk. Can you maybe walk us through how that happened? I know you, there's a connection there. Yeah, I've known Luke since his high school days, playing at uh, my alma mater there, Cardinal Mooney. Um, but Luke is a is a, a big, strong linebacker, and um, we had a need, you know, um, with Jamin. Uh, declaring early and what happened with Chris, um, you know, we went from a, a great strength there to being a little bit, um, you know, low on numbers. And so I think it, it was an opportunity for each of us. So, um, so I'm excited about uh, seeing what he can do. So, um, you know, we've only seen him in the weight room and out there doing some conditioning. So, uh, 
but he's a big, strong guy, smart guy, and uh, he's working extremely hard. So we'll see how it goes this spring. John Hale. Marcus, what are your expectations for Wandell Robinson now that you finally have him on campus this spring? I, I know there was a lot of talk of what he could do in Liam's offense, but what does that look like now? Well, we will see, John. Um, I'm very excited about it, obviously. You don't need to watch much film or watch Wandell very long to see how talented he is. Um, I think what's been great for me to see is, is – you know, reaffirming my thoughts on him as he's a guy that's extremely dedicated also. He's not only talented, but he's very dedicated. He works really hard, and he's, he's committed to it. And uh, I'm, that excites me, you know, because you want that to, to spread to other guys, and you always want to bring guys into the program that are going to, you know, affect people in a positive way. And so I like what I've seen. You know, just his movements, you know, we're, I haven't, we're not allowed to have a football to this point, but just his movements in the way he – he, he explodes, you could see how fluid he is and you could feel his presence, uh, the way he accelerates and puts pressure on a defense. So um, that's not hard to see, you know. And uh, so, you know, I think, you know, that will come, you know, and, uh, you know, we'll go through this spring and, and he'll get better and better. But, you know, you could watch his film and watch him on TV from a year ago and you see the talent, you see the explosiveness. Uh, but it's also good to see the mindset that he has and the commitment level that he has. All right, thank you, Coach. You guys okay. give me one.